breaking news about the cost of living. Statistics Canada says the inflation rate in March rose, get this, by a whopping 6.7% year over year. That is significantly higher than experts predicted. And it's the highest since January of 1991. It is also a full percentage point more than the increase in February. CBC Business reporter Scott Peterson is all over this story. Why so high, Scott? Uh, pretty much every group the Statistics Canada tracks it was to the upside and a lot more than economists were expecting. Uh, that full percentage point uh, jump uh, as well, Suhanna, from month to month is one of the largest monthly jumps going back years as well. But let's itemize this and get into why uh, we're seeing such a vigorous jump in the inflation rate. And as anybody that's go gone to the pumps lately, they know the number one reason that is the price of gasoline. Proportionally, it makes up a lot of this index. It was up 12 percent just just over the last month alone. A lot of that can be traced to the conflict, the war that uh, Russia has initiated within Ukraine. But to year to date as well, it's up close to 40% the price of gas. And that's a hard one to avoid for many Canadians. And it, it filters into a lot of transportation costs, etc. Also, car prices up 7% year over year. That's vehicle prices. Used cars up even more. Uh, getting into it even further, furniture prices up 14%. And groceries, of course, this one's unavoidable for uh, all of us, 8.7% is the jump uh, year to year, and that is the biggest monthly jump we see going all the way back to 2009, and that was right after the Great Recession in 2008, so that's a real milestone. Pasta prices, for example, a staple for a lot of Canadian families, up 18% year over year. Uh, also, uh, we got breakfast cereal, because the grain prices to the upside up over 12%, so it's hard to avoid these uh, for any Canadians out there, and this really hurts us where where it counts and that's in the wallet because we're not getting anywhere near that as far as wage increases going so that means that's a real divot out of people's pocketbooks Suhanna. and this is where I ask you to pull out your crystal ball <laughs> any idea how long this high inflation will last well I was, I've been looking through the economist reports uh, in response to this higher than expected inflation and again there's two things they're looking at how long this is gonna last and we're, we're hearing from words from from Tiff Macklem just last week that we are expecting the, the uh, inflation rate to stay as high as 6% perhaps for the foreseeable future before coming down to the 2% comfort zone and that's a big ways to drop and that would be not until the end of next year. That seems to be reaffirmed this morning and the second shoe to drop here is what is the Bank of Canada going to do? They're going to uh, potentially raise uh, uh, their uh, interest rates again next month or even as late as June and that seems to be pretty much solidified. So insult to injury, we have to pay more for the debt that we're carrying to finance a higher cost of living at the same time, Suhanna. All right, thanks for that, Scott. Yeah. And let's stay on this story because inflation is certainly top of mind for all of our viewers as you go to the grocery store, as you go wherever you, you know, fill up your car. Uh, we've got Kevin Page standing by. He is the uh, uh, former parliamentary uh, uh, budget officer, and uh, we reached him in Ottawa. Uh, Kevin, this new high, it's a 31 year high, 6.7%. Does that make you quake? Um, yeah, I mean, it's, a, it's an enormous year over year increase. It's, uh, you know, I think consumers are probably seeing the difference just in March and now uh, in, in, and in February. These are large month to month increases as well. So, yeah, these are historic times, both in terms of looking at CPI numbers, but also, we look behind it, you know, we, we see COVID, we see uh, the Russia-Ukraine war. So there's some historic factors behind these big increases. So at what point then, you know, should we be concerned, Kevin? Yeah, I think, <clears throat> I think we are concerned now. I think you know, people sitting around their, you know, their tables at breakfast time or lunch or supper time, their families are trying to, how are we going to deal with these higher food prices? How are we going to deal with the higher gas prices? You can't avoid them, you know, the, the home shelter costs. Uh, so if people are trying to adjust their budgets for this stuff, is it, is it really likely that these numbers will drift upwards before they drift back down? There's not a lot of certainty as to where these numbers will be. But, you know, these month-to-month -month increases in February and March, like, they're, they're historic increases for sure. I remember when Tiff Macklin was saying, you know, that they were going to level out, not to worry, uh, and then inflation will, will drop. But then, you know, we hit this war in Ukraine, uh, worries about housing numbers going crazy again. 
And then the Bank of Canada tried to do something. It raised its interest rates by 50 basis points. Is it going to take much more of that to bring this under control? Yeah, I mean, I think, I mean, the governments are doing what they can do. The bank is trying to do what it can do in terms of raising interest rates. I think gradually, I think, um, yeah, we should, as consumers, plan on seeing interest rates go up one, two, maybe even three percentage points over the next couple of years. I think, like, the, the, these prices are going up on a year-over-year, month-to-month basis. And, and, um, and I think, again, you can see it through all the component pieces. And I think that, you know, the, the inflationary impacts are kind of are, are, are spreading. So it's... We're seeing it, you know, even if you exclude food and exclude energy, the price indices are still way above the Bank of Canada's sort of target range. You know, and I think, you know, when Canadians, like they watch CBC, they realize that, um, you know, they see the impact of the Russia-Ukraine war and these commodity prices, uh, on commodity prices, um, that, you know, we're just gonna, we're just going to have to strap down and we're going to have to deal with this over the next year, year and a half. A year, a year and a half, and then what? Well, I, I think it's like people's inflationary expectations, they're adjusting because we haven't seen a, a spike in inflation like this. <clears throat> you know, in a one-year impact, people are kind of realizing now that they better plan on something that looks like 5 6 7% this year. I think it's hard to see beyond that because so much of this will depend on what happens in the Russia-Ukraine war and how countries respond. Um, yeah, so... Um, yeah, but I think we have to... As consumers managing, like, shrinking disposable incomes... Uh, they're going to have to kind of find ways that they can, you know, you know, do little shortcuts, adjust their food budgets, uh, you know, travel in different ways, <clears throat> use public transit, uh, ride your bicycle more, just try to stay a little bit, you know, maybe fewer longer trips that are going to, you know, take up a lot of uh, uh, fuel consumption. Yeah, so we're all we're all going to have to adjust over the next year. And you know what, Kevin, does this make it even harder to digest coming out of a two two years of a pandemic? Yeah, it's it's a historic. I mean, the pandemic was historic. We hadn't seen something like that in a hundred years. Now to follow that up, which was a supply shock. I mean, people we had to social distance, supply bottlenecks really across the world. Now another global geopolitical shock, a Russia Ukraine shock, which is driving up uh, commodity prices, oil, gas, metals, agriculture as well. And yeah, the feed through effects of these are pretty significant. And I think people are realizing that inflation is running six, seven percent, but their wage increases might be in the two, three percent range. So their disposable incomes, they're shrinking in real terms. One other question I have for you, and this kind of personally ticks me off, okay? Economists say this is way more than we expected. And they said that again last month. But, you know, they've gone, they've done the studies on this stuff. This is what they're paid to do, is to, to not pull out the crystal ball, but to do the modeling, to get it right. Why aren't they getting it right? Yeah, I think um, it's one thing to kind of forecast inflation in, in sort of more normal, typical times. It's another to try to wrap your head around when you shut down a global economy in 2020, what will the impact be? Um, when you have a Russia-Ukraine war, how will countries respond in terms of the importation of Russia, um, you know, agricultural metals and, and oil and gas kinds of products? So I think economists are typically quite bad, particularly when it comes to, like, looking at these geopolitical events. Um, you know, but I think, again, there's a moral issue behind this, you know, particularly with respect to the Russia-Ukraine war. Like, there's an historic political opportunity now to kind of reduce our reliance on, on, uh, on non-renewable, you know, energy sources. And, um, yeah, we're, we're just, I think, as, you know, as we live in liberal democracies, we're going to have to pay the price. Uh, final question for you. The U.S. Fed, I know, is thinking about a 75 basis point increase to interest rates. Uh, Canada just came up with its 50 percent. Uh, we heard that from Tiff Macklem. And then I suppose, when is it? Is it May or June that there's the bank will sit again? May, I think. Do you think, is there, will there be pressure for Canada to then follow if the U.S. does 75 basis points for Canada to do the same to, you know, let's ta tackle this at big doses? Yeah, I think, um, I mean, first, like, we still have to realize that these interest rates, Johanna, they're at record low levels. So yeah. even, uh, the policy rate of the Bank of Canada, you know, with that 50 basis point adjustment that we talked about, it's sitting at 1%. That is like a full percentage point below what it was pre-COVID times. It's about four percentage points below where we were in sort of 2008-9 before the global financial crisis. So these rates, they need to be normalized. So a normal rate for the, the, this policy, uh, the, the Bank of Canada's policy rate would be 2 to 3 percent, probably closer to 3 percent. So that we're still two percentage points below what a normal rate should really look like. So the, these interest rates are very stimulative. 
And so the bank is trying to normalize by raising these interest rates. So we have to adjust as consumers to say, we have to make sure we have the room in our budgets to take, you know, if we have to, you know, maybe to deal with another one, two percentage point or maybe three percentage point increase in a mortgage rate, we have to start planning on, on, in, in this sort of fashion. You know what? You're absolutely right. And uh, tell that to the 20-somethings, because uh, I, I, I think part of that is this shock of uh, inflation and the shock of these interest rates after having such low numbers for so long. Kevin, always a pleasure to talk to you. You be well, okay? Good to be with you, Suhanna. Kevin Page is a former parliamentary budget officer. He's also president and CEO of the Institute of Physical Studies and Democracy at the University of Ottawa.